A while ago, me and my Italian husband decided to move to Italy, so we packed up our things and we drove our way there. We are planning to start up a new life here, living closer to nature and learning how to work the land. All of that whilst enjoying the perks of living close to beautiful mountains. We start our journey in an old abandoned family house that was built in the early 60s. I invite you to follow us during this renovation and decoration works and see us turn this house into our new home. The house where we will live has been abandoned for six years. This happened after the last family member that lived here sadly passed away. We don't know how long we will be living in this house, and restructuring it would be quite complex. Therefore, we will only fix up problems that we come across, in order to be able to comfortably live here. The house is very old, and still filled with a lot of furniture, and on top of that were added our things that were moved to Italy. So first, we needed to clear out all the rooms, so that we could see what we were working with. We made a selection of the things that could still be used, things that could have meaning for other family members, and things that could be thrown away. I'm rather small to be dragging around big pieces of furniture, so I left that job to my husband and his friends. While I cleaned attic, where we would store some furniture that could be useful later. It took about a week to have the house mostly cleared, and now, we could see much better what we were working with. When we turned on the electricity, we noticed some suspicious smells and quickly found out what caused it. In some places, the insulation layer of our cables had rotten away, which meant that we had to redo the entire electric system. My husband has a good friend that sacrificed a week of his holidays to help us. He explained that when electric cables have been without a current for longer than two years, they can start to decompose. First we had to hammer new holes to fit more modern electricity boxes. I advise you to always try to do this kind of works before any other works, because it creates a very thin type of dust that gets everywhere. While the men were pulling the new cables through, I fixed up the walls. This was my first time doing this type of work, and I learned as I went on with it. First, I removed all the loose bits. Now, after some experience, I would have removed all the broken wall bits with a hammer too, but it does no harm like this. Then, I mixed up some quick drying cement that in Italy they call gesso. To help the cement hold its position, I dipped small stones in the mixture and stuck them to the wall, to then fill up the cracks with some more cement. A bit of sanding. This is pre-mixed plaster. After a first layer, I smoothen it down with a damp cloth. You can also use sandpaper, but this produces extra dust. And the wall is completely smooth again. The bottom of some walls had a bit of damage, which I covered with some plaster paste. Also, the cracks were filled with plaster. This room needed some extra love.
For the big crack, we made the architect come, and he told us that it was safe to live here. The cement layer of this wall had come loose a bit, so I removed it, and I also removed some extra loose bits with the hammer. Anything that is still structurally sound will not come loose so easily with a hammer. Then I prepared the wall for some quick drying cement. First I applied a layer with stones, to help the cement hold shape while drying. Then I applied a layer of just cement, and over that plaster. I closed this room off fully and used an electric sander to sand down all the cement and plaster. These surfaces were too big to do by hand. When I looked in the camera, I reminded myself of someone. Oh, stop worrying! This disguise would fool my own mother! Our hallway had collected some clutter during all the works. Next, it was time to clean the walls with soap and water. Any dirt or dust particles might interfere with the paint attaching to the wall. This is a long and tedious job. Spider webs are easiest to remove with a vacuum cleaner. Like this, they don't leave any residue. Any mold stains were treated with a proper mold cleaner. And later painted over with paint that had antifungal properties. I was happy to see that the wooden floors stayed intact that well, but they were completely grey from years and years of dirt. So I cleaned them thoroughly, by hand. And after two layers of oil, they look like new. I used white silicone to fill up the small gaps between the doorpost and the wall. This was an electricity cable that was still okay and that we left. But I didn't like the way that it was attached to the wall. So I decided to reattach it with silicone, which is way more smooth in a final look. And then I could start painting. At this point I worked by myself because my husband had started to go to work. When you renovate, money flies out way faster than it comes in. Finally, I could start applying colors to the walls, which immediately gave the house a very different character.
but which colors went in which rooms I will keep a surprise. Until the next episode. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video, and maybe I see you again for the next episode. Thank you for watching, and I wish you all a lovely day.